All right, guys, so let's get straight into the walkthrough. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a full shipping plan with Amazon as an FBA seller. So once you've ordered your products, everything's good to go. You have them physically. Now you can go ahead and create the Amazon shipping plan. So the first thing that you're going to do is select which products you'd like to sell. So let's pretend that we're going to be sending these five products. So you're going to select all five. Then you're going to click action on five selected. Once you do that, you can do send slash replenish inventory. And this is how you're going to be restocking your inventory as well. So every time you want to send products or restock them to Amazon, this is always how you're going to do it. So once you click on send slash replenish inventory, then it's just going to ask you like, are you sure that these are the five products you want to send? You're going to press yes, continue. And so now this is the actual shipping plan that you're going to fill out. So the first thing that I want you to do is to add your ship from address. You need to add this address. One of the biggest mistakes that I see happen is people will be like, I can't do a shipping plan. It won't let me continue. It's because you didn't add your ship from address. So make sure to add this address and then you can continue to filling out the details for each of your products. So now what you're going to do is fill out the prep and labeling details for each product. So the first time that you send a product, it will always make you do this. But let's say you're going to go restock it next week. You won't have to refill the prep and labeling details every single time. It's only the first time that you send this exact product. So I'm going to press on the prep and labeling details needed. So it's going to say prep guidance, which basically they're asking you what type of product is it and does it need any specific prepping? If it's just a normal product, I want you to put no prep needed for all of the products. Unless it's something that's made out of glass or it's a liquid or powder, then you can maybe specify but if it's just a normal product that doesn't need any special prepping, you're just going to put no prep needed. Then you're going to press save. Now it's going to ask you who's going to label the unit. So is it going to be you, the seller, or is it going to be Amazon for 20 cents per unit? So if you want to start out and you don't want to have to deal with labeling your products, you can pay Amazon 20 cents per unit to do it for you. And honestly, like it's not a bad idea. You could do it if you'd like. I always did it myself just because the task is not very hard and like you save money by doing it yourself. But if you're short on time, it doesn't hurt to try this out. I work with some people who do do this option because they don't have a printer at home already and they knew that they were going to get a prep center as soon as possible. So they didn't want to invest in a printer. So they were just like, you know what? I'm going to pay Amazon to do it for me until I start working with a prep center who will just do the whole entire process for me anyways. So those are your options. I'm just going to put buy seller for this example. Then you're going to press save. So once you press the save button the units box is going to pop open which will then allow you to put how many units you're going to be sending so let's pretend for the purpose of this example that i'm sending 10 units of each product so i'm going to put 10 units then over here it's going to say expiration you need to put an expiration date for products that will specifically require one so most products like cosmetics or stuff that you can eat will typically have an expiration date so you just have to fill it out over here However, if the product does not have an expiration date because there's plenty of like pet food um, that doesn't actually have an expiration date, if ever that's the case, you can try to Google the company, see how long their products last and kind of just make up an expiration date that is suited towards that product. For example, I used to sell these dog treats and I had Googled the information and apparently these products last about one year. So I put one year from today's date. And so once you filled out all of the details for this product, you can press ready to pack and you're going to see down here that it will actually adjust. It's going to say SKUs that are ready to send. SKU is like the product. So we have one product ready to send so far, a total of 10 units and so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill out the other ones all right so now that all of the unit boxes are open for all of them I'm just going to put 10 units for each and then I'm just gonna do ready to pack for all of them and now down here it's gonna say SKUs ready to send we have a total of five products or SKUs and 50 units total. One little detail that I'm going to mention is if ever you have a product that says poly bagging required here you won't be able to choose no prep needed so in most cases, most products won't require these things, so you can just put no prep needed. But if ever it says poly bagging required for liquids, powders, or really small products, then you'd need to poly bag these products. If ever you have something that needs to be bubble wrapped, which is typically like a glass product, you have to wrap the product in bubble wrap. Typically, bubble wrap will be free because if you're ordering a bunch of stuff online anyways, they usually will come with these supplies. However, when it comes to poly bags, you should buy some. You can just type Amazon poly bags on Amazon and you can find a bunch of different poly bags. Just make sure that it has the choking hazard for children in French, English, and Spanish. That's a rule from Amazon. So just make sure that it has the, those warnings. And so just before we press continue, this is where you guys can actually
actually print your labels. So once you've added them all here, now it basically has generated the labels for you for your individual units. So you're going to press print all SKU labels. Um, I like to do the 30 UP labels. This is kind of like the standard size, but obviously double check with what type of printer, printer you're using and double check the size of the labels that you're using. I personally use a Dymo printer, but my printer has been discontinued. So I would recommend to look into either buying a thermal printer or if you have a regular printer at home, a lot of times you can buy sticky labels that, that are actually compatible with like cheap inkjet printers for like 69 bucks. You really don't have to go out and buy like a super expensive printer. You can also go on Amazon and write uh, Amazon FBA labels and they will already be in this exact size. So take a look at that, but this is how you're going to actually print them. So I'm going to press print all and it will actually download the labels to my computer and then I can open it up and now I have all of my labels generated. And then you're going to print it out on a sheet with stickers. You can, you'll just be able to take the stickers off and you have to place it directly on the product. Let's pretend that this is my product. Wherever the barcode is, you need to cover the already existing UPC code of the product with the Amazon label. So I would put it just directly on top of this barcode. If ever you have a product that's very small and the barcode is a little bit too big to put on the product and it and it's folding over and like somebody won't be able to scan it, I would recommend to put the product in a poly bag and then put the label on top of the poly bag. And so once you've filled out the information for all of your products, you're going to do pack individual units. And so now what will happen is it's going to potentially separate your products into different groups. And what this means is that each group can be packed together. So it's saying pack group one, these SKUs can be packed together. Over here, it says pack group two, these SKUs can be packed together. So in this example, this product here has to be in a separate box. These ones can all be in the same box. Ideally, to have the cheapest fee possible, you want to be able to shove everything together in the same box. That's the most ideal scenario. If ever you have a product that's awkwardly shaped, very large, or something like that, then they typically will make you separate them. So unfortunately, it will cost you a bit more. That's why small and light products are the best products that you can get. So now that you know how to pack your products, you can go start taking your boxes and placing them in the boxes that they're going to go into. So you should do this in advance. So set up everything. Now when you're at this page, go put the products in the boxes and you're allowed to mix everything together for group two. So put them all into the box. Try to squeeze them all into one box. If you need two boxes, that's fine. But the less amount of space taken, the cheaper it will be. So for the first group, let's pretend that you're able to fit all 10 units of this product into one box. You're going to put everything will fit into one box. If you need more than one box, you're going to do multiple boxes will be needed. So for this one, I'm going to do confirm. Now it's going to ask you for your box dimensions and your box weight. Guys, all you need to do is have a tape measure. Like you can just use a cheap tape measure from Dollarama. You're going to measure left width height. You can actually put them in any order that you wish, but typically how we do it is length width height. So basically you're going to do the length, the width, and the height of the box. And you're going to fill out the information here. Then for weighing the box, what you can do is you can use a body weight scale. So almost everyone has a body weight scale. What you're going to do first is weigh yourself write down your weight. Then what you're going to do is weigh yourself holding the box. So pick up the box, step on the weight, check how much it weighs with you holding the box. And then essentially you're going to have your total weight, which is going to be you plus the box. And then you're going to do minus your weight. So your weight plus the box minus your weight will essentially leave you with the box weight. And that's how you can weigh all of your boxes without having to use like a fancy box scale. So you're going to plug in your numbers. Let's say it's five by five by five. This is in centimeters and then the box weight has to be in kilograms. So let's put five for this one as well. Then I'm going to do confirm packing information. Now we need to do the second one. Let's pretend that it needs two boxes. So you're going to do multiple boxes will be needed. Confirm. Enter, always do enter through a web form. However, if you have more than 10 boxes, it's going to make you do it with one of the other methods. However, these ones are very complicated. I wouldn't recommend doing it. So what I would recommend doing is do 10 boxes at a time per shipment. So you're going to do enter through a web form. Then it's going to say, how many boxes do you need? So you're going to put two boxes and then you're going to do open web form. And at this point, what I want you to do is write down on a sheet of paper, which products go into each box. So for example, if if group two requires two boxes, you're going to do box one and box two, and you are allowed to write it down on the box. So take a, take a Sharpie or a pen and write box one on the first box, box two on the second box. And I want you to take a, a sheet of paper, 
write box one, box two, and write I have five of these in box one, five of these in box two, five of these in box one, five of these in box two. I have all 10 of these in box one, etc. So write down which products are going in each box as you're packing them so that you don't get disorganized. And trust me, guys, when I used to do the shipping plan completely myself, now it's my prep center. But I used to make so many mistakes because honestly, it's really easy to get disorganized when you're shipping like 300 units. So the more units you have, the more complicated this is going to be, obviously. And it's crucial to be very organized so you don't miscount your units. So you're going to do two boxes, press open web form. And now it's going to ask you literally what I just said, which products are going to be in box one and how many units and which ones are going to be in box two and how many units. So let's do what I was saying. We'll do five, five. Over here, let's say we have five, five. Here we have 10. And then here, let's do three and seven. So basically, you just want to make sure that it at the end, it says 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. And obviously, double check your boxes. Make sure you put everything in the right box. And then just make sure that the numbers at the bottom match. So then what you're going to do is put the box weight for each box. So if box one weighs, let's say 20 kgs and this one weighs 10 kgs. Lastly, you're going to put the box dimensions. So let's pretend it's 14 by 13 by 12. And if that's the dimensions for box one, you're going to check this box. If ever you buy boxes and they're all the same size, you can check off both boxes saying that they both have the same box dimensions. If box two is not the same as box one, you're going to do add another box dimension and fill it out separately over here and then check the box underneath box two once you've done that you can do confirm packing information all right guys so now all that you need to do is to accept the shipping payment and to print out your box labels so first of all it's going to ask you for your shipping date so you need to put in the date of when you're going to be shipping out the boxes. So for example, if I'm doing my shipment today on Wednesday and then tomorrow morning, I'm going to go, I'm going to go bring the boxes. I'm going to put the 24th over here. It's going to show you the charges that will be billed to your Amazon balance. So you do not have to pay this fee with your credit card or to UPS. It will literally just be billed on your Amazon balance. And if you have no sales when they actually charge the payment, then it will be charged to the credit card on file. If not, it'll just be deducted from your sales. So always do small parcel delivery unless you start doing pallets, then you're, gonna, then you're going to do this option here. Here's just a recap of our two different shipments. So we have one box over here with 10 units for shipment one, and then shipment two is two boxes. And they're actually being sent to two different places because sometimes they don't have space for all of your stuff so they might separate them. Always choose UPS Amazon Partnered Carrier. It's always cheaper with UPS Partnered Carrier. Never choose one of these because you will have to pay out of pocket at the store. Just choose this one. Then you just need to go and accept charges and confirm shipping. You'll have 24 hours to void it if ever you make a mistake. And so I'm just doing a mock shipment but I'm going to be able to delete it right after. So right now it's generating the shipping labels, the box labels that we're going to be putting on the boxes directly. So you're going to have three boxes with this example. So they're going to give you three labels to print. So first of all, for shipment one, we have our label. So this is our box label. It's the same thing. You just click on it. It's going to allow you to print it out over here. So you just have to print it out and then you can either tape them to the box or if you're from Canada, you can actually get free plastic adhesives from Canada Post. You just have to create a free business account and you'll actually be able to order free plastic adhesives. Maybe I'll make a video about that in the future for you guys. But if you don't have any plastic adhesives, you can literally just tape them to the box. And so this one over here is going to have two labels for the two boxes. You're actually going to put them side by side. And if ever the boxes that you're using, because you can reuse old boxes, you can use a Walmart box or a Sephora box, you're not going to get in trouble. But you need to make sure that there's no old shipping labels on the boxes or any old barcodes or anything like that. It all needs to be crossed out with a black Sharpie or removed with Goo Gone, whatever you prefer. What I like to do is just cover the old shipping label with the new Amazon one. And that way I don't have to struggle to get it off. I just slap it on top, tape it or use the plastic adhesives from Canada Post. And all right, guys, so that's literally it. Once you've done that, all you need to do is bring the boxes to UPS. You can also have UPS come pick them up from your house by doing a free UPS pickup. It's not free for the US, I believe, but it's free for Canadians. So I'm going to have a video about that coming soon as well to show you guys exactly how to request a free pickup from UPS. And so if you want to view the tracking details for your shipment, you can click on this link right here. It will bring you directly to see the 
the tracking so you can follow where your boxes are going but once your boxes actually arrive to amazon and become active amazon will send you multiple emails to let you know lastly if you need to cancel your shipment because you're doing a mock shipment or if you make a mistake you just have to press cancel shipment and you have 24 hours to do so so i'm, I'm just going to do i confirm that any fba box label and shipping labels generated for this workflow will be destroyed cancel shipment and charges and it will completely delete it from my account and they will not charge me all right guys so that is pretty much it for this video if you found it helpful please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more amazon content coming soon and i will see you guys in the next video